Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of Let's Learn ES6. In this series, we go over new features available to us in ES6, the latest version of JavaScript. In this episode, we're going to be looking at destructuring. Destructuring is uh, new to ES6, it's new to JavaScript, and it's a way for us to extract data from different data structures like arrays and objects, and sort of pick and choose the values that we want. The syntax for destructuring uh, might look kind of familiar, familiar because it depends on what we're uh, pulling the data from, be it an object or an array. Uh, let's look at an object first, and I can show you how that works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a simple person object, like such. Uh, we'll give it a couple values, so we'll give it a name, an age, oops, and this one last, let's say, location. Uh, Toronto looks okay. So, in order to access the age property, for example, there's a couple ways we could do this. Uh, this is just some basic object stuff. So we could do person dot age. That would access the age value. Of 30. We could do person square brackets age, uh, age in um, quotes, so age as a string. Oh, I'm mixing double and single there. Uh, and that would also get us 30. With destructuring, we now have a new way to access properties and also kind of pick the ones we want. So destructuring looks like this. So we create a new, uh, what looks to be a variable declaration. However, on the left hand side, we have this object looking thing. And in there, we can do something like this. And person. So what's going on here is that this here is our destructuring expression. The first thing inside of that expression on the left is the key that we want to grab the value from. On the right of that key is the uh, new variable that we're trying to create to store the, va uh, the value in. And on the right-hand side of the whole declaration uh, is where we put the object that we're taking these values from, the object that we're extracting the values from. So if we console.log now, person age, person age, there we go, you'll see we get block scope, what? Oh. I never changed it to ES6. Uh, so if you noticed, I had it set to JavaScript there. I need to make sure that I changed it to ES6 Babel. So if I just try that again, there we go. Uh, obviously, the let keyword is not available just yet in all browsers. So uh, we're just going to do it like this. Now, uh, we get the age out of here. The great thing about destructuring is, uh, and maybe not the great thing, is there's many, many different ways we could actually uh, get this value. So there's also a shorthand version. So we could just use the key here. So age is the key inside of the person property. And age is what we want to assign the age to. And we can make it look like that. Uh, that's kind of nice because it, we don't have to create a new variable. And we don't have to add this sort of uh, I would say a little confusing um, left-right assignment here. Um, we can also uh, uh, grab multiple values. So let's go back to just doing age like this. And let's put a comma. So just like, again, if you had an object with multiple values in it, put the comma there. And we can say, let's grab the location. So if we do location, and we'll put current location. And we can just go current location and hit run. And you'll see 30 in Toronto. So real quick note, uh, we couldn't just use the location key uh, because that is a global value inside of the browser. And when you assign something to that, it affects the browser. And we don't want to do that. We just want to store the value stored in this person uh, location key in current location. So that's really neat. And uh, I want to show you one other way that we can do this. In, an, uh, in a later video, not an earlier video, in a later video, we'll look at um, the new features available to just object literals as a whole. We've seen a couple here and there. Uh, but one of the new features is something called computed properties. Now, computed properties look something like this. And I'm just going to remove these. So in between square brackets, similar to how we, actually, I'm going to put that back, similar to how we can use bracket notation to access a property, 
we can actually assign a property uh, with these square brackets and we can put expressions inside of here. In this case, for example, we could just put a simple expression like this. Let's say in our program, we somehow get like a dynamic key name. Uh, we'll use age again. We can put key there. So the value of key is age. So it's going to look for the key uh, or the age property uh, on our object. And we can just say, uh, let's use the key age uh, variable. And if we do it like this, uh, we're still going to get, going to clear that and hit run, 30. So that's pretty neat. Um, I'm going to show you a pretty like real world example of how to use or where you might see destructuring of objects in a second. But before I get to that, let's take a look at uh, arrays as well. So the two different kind of data structures we can work with with destructuring are arrays and objects. So uh, arrays are a little bit more straightforward. There's not as much syntax around them. So let's assume we have a numbers array here. If I could spell numbers, there we go. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, we'll just keep it at four. If I wanted to get the first value, I could say create a new variable. So let first uh, equal numbers. Oh my goodness. There we go. Um, oof. There we go. Let second equal numbers one. There we go. Uh, we could do that for all of the different values if we wanted to get them out. Uh, let's assume that the values are actually maybe a little bit more than just numbers. Maybe there are objects in there or functions or something like that. Using destructuring, we could simply just do this in one line. So say let. And instead of using the curly brackets here, uh, curly brackets would denote the object literal. In this case, we're going to do the square brackets, which denote the array. And we'll say first, comma, second equals numbers. So again, oops, there we go. Again, the syntax is on the left hand side, we have the new values that we want to create. So in this case, we're creating two variables, first and second. And on the right hand side, we have the array or the uh, data that we were trying to extract from it. If we go console.log here, first and second. And I'm just going to clear this window. There we go. We get one and two. Uh, the neat thing about the array uh, destructuring is that we can actually skip. So say we actually wanted to grab this fourth one here, and we don't need whatever is in uh, this position. You can actually go comma, comma, so leave like a blank space where that position is, and say fourth, for example. And if we do this and hit run, you'll see that we grab the fourth one, leaving that third one just where it is. So we're just kind of like splicing it out almost, which is pretty cool. Also, if you haven't watched the video from last week, we looked at the spread operator and rest parameters. You can also use rest parameters in a destructuring statement or expression. So you go dot, 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 like the rest, the rest here, and also get the remaining values. So that's pretty neat. So you can actually kind of like pull things out however you want. Pretty cool stuff. So where would you use this kind of thing? You might be thinking that, um, and I'm going to show you, I think where a lot of people are going to see this first is within React and uh, more importantly, using something like React Router, for example. We haven't looked at modules yet. We'll look at that up in an upcoming video. But uh, this import statement, so this isn't going to run inside of uh, the browser here, but this import statement would import the React uh, package uh, from NPM. Uh, so the node modules folder and same with React DOM and same with React Router. However, React Router uh, exports quite a few different uh, modules inside of it. So using the structuring, we can actually just pick out the ones that we want. So uh, if we're kind of on the main app component, we want the router to set up our router, the route component to set up our routes, if you see down here, actually, let me put a little space down here, and the link component to set up the link component for uh, transitioning between pages. If you didn't do something like this, what you might actually end up having to do uh, if you're using, say, non-ES6 uh, modules and destructuring would be something like, oops, what am I doing here? There we go. Something like this. 
So really, the destructuring uh, expression allows us to uh, distill down and make a, a little bit of a shorter uh, one-off line, uh, as opposed to doing three separate lines requiring uh, the three separate things from the React module or React router module. So uh, I just want to also point out that this is not uh, destructuring. Obviously, is not specific to React, um, and it's not specific to npm or anything like that. Um, I just feel like this is uh, the first place a lot of people are going to be introduced to this concept. So that's it for this week. Uh, hopefully you learned a little something or just, um, yeah, a little something. Uh, next week we'll be looking at how to compile our ES6 code with Gulp and Babel. And uh, other than that, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, rchristiani. And other than that, I'll see you later. Bye.